Hey man, you ready to see what I did to the studio and how I'm gonna use all of this new gear I got? I know you are. Let's check it out. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. And if you don't know, this channel is all about helping you to record and mix better and faster. So if you're new to the place, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you don't do it now, you're going to do it by the end of this video on my mama. If you already been following the channel, then you know that I have been upgrading my studio. I started off with doing the floors over, lay down some new wood. Look at oh, oh, wood grain. Oh, peep the shoe game, peep the shoe game. Okay. Started off there. Then we went and did some panels, man, with the Prime Acoustics London kit. And then I even upgraded my studio desk to the Argosy Halo Plus desk. And then <laughs> I bought a whole bunch of analog gear to fill up my racks and actually create a hybrid mixing setup, man. So I've been kind of bringing y'all along the way, showing y'all a little bit uh, of the piece by piece as I build it up. But now I feel like it's time for the big reveal. So I'm gonna go ahead and just give y'all a studio tour, show y'all my workspace, show y'all how I actually use everything that I have. And yeah, man, so welcome to the Wavy Studio. Let's get it. <laughs> All right, y'all, we're going to do this real POV style. You know what I'm saying? Um, as you walk in the studio, this is the door right here in the back. You walk in. This is pretty much what you're going to see. You're going to see that desk. And dang, what a view to see as soon as you walk in. Like, oh, my God. I love that. I love walking into this space, looking at this desk. It just makes me so inspired, ready to work and get started. But before we get off into that stuff over there, let's go over here. This is like kind of what I call my lounge area. Got my little uh, Nano Leaf light panel. This light panel is pretty dope, man. If y'all don't, if y'all not hip, check that out, man. It's called a Nano Leaf, okay? Over here, we got a little TV. Always playing some wavy videos. You know what I'm talking about? That's how I get my views up because y'all don't be watching the videos like that. So I got to watch my own videos. On this wall over here, this is just to kind of cause some uh, absorption so the sound whenever it's bouncing back off into this little kind of corner because if you notice it is more like an l shape okay so i'm like off into a corner back up in here and so i just put this absorption panels this is part of that prime acoustics london 16 kit to really dampen this area up back here so sound ain't bouncing around too much all right right here this is the world famous uh key light that i got uh, this is the light yeah i never really see but it's in all my videos so shout out to that light you know what i'm talking about <laughs> over here let's actually bring this light over here man we doing this ghetto production style so <laughs> over here i got just like a little storage area all right down at the bottom I got all my mics. It's my little mic collection. Well, it's not all of them, but it's some of them, the ones that are actually in cases. So I, I keep those stacked up here. If y'all want to see a video on that mic collection, let me know because I'll, I'll be glad to kind of uh, show y'all everything I got. I'm storing a few more things. I got my new Roland Verslab MV1. I've been having so much fun with this thing, man. If you ain't checked out the videos on that, make sure you do that. I store a couple uh some little camera gear here got my little extra battery lenses and all of that um the camera that i shoot with y'all always asking me um i shoot with sony cameras only this one is a sony a7 III and the camera that i'm actually using right now because obviously that's not the one i'm using a sony a6600 all right so um yeah now you know all right over here got a little mic in case i need to use that for anything i use that a lot whenever I'm working with the verse lab. This Zoom H4n, this is a super cool little uh, mobile uh, recorder, little portable recording device. Got a little XY stereo recorder at the top. Also got some XLR inputs. So I use that a lot when I'm working on video content um, to capture audio outside of my DAW. I got a mixer, what's this? Oh, this is a microphone in here. Oh, this is, uh, let me show y'all this mic. This mic is actually a Gage ECM87, man. This is like a $300 microphone. I think it's like less than that. I think it's like $250, but wow, it sounds so good. All right, and then I got this mixer over here. I use this Behringer mixer a lot of times when I'm doing like little live shows, like small um, live setups that I just need like a couple of inputs, couple of outputs. 
something real simple and basic. This thing works great, super portable, and it also acts as an audio interface if I ever need to use it as that, even though I never used it like that. But it's good to know that it can do that, and it's got some onboard effects. So if you need like a little mixer, that joint is proper, all right? Then I just got a couple little cool little items that I like. This Sontronic Saturn microphone, I just love the way it looks, so I don't want to have it sitting in the case. I got it sitting out. I found this little guy in Mexico. I thought that was pretty tight. They said it's made out of shark bones, but, you know, who knows? <laughs> And then this uh, mic is actually a gift to me, man. It's just like, a, I think it's called a Bumblebee um, mic, right? It's, it's like the company, but I just think it looks so cool. It's actually a USB microphone, which is also um, cool. So if I ever need to use a USB mic, I got a cool one and not a plain old boring one. So shout out to my man Xavier for hooking me up with that. I bet. Oh, I forgot something. Right over here, we got that good YouTube Plizak, man. Thanks to everybody who helped me to hit 100,000 subscribers, man. I wish they give you a plaque for 200,000, but it's all good because we're going to get there and we on our way. We crawling up. Shout out to everybody who actually subscribed to the channel. All right. So then um, let's just go over to this little rack. This is my little sidecar over here um at the top man this y'all have heard me and seen me talking about this thing i got a link to it right in the description but this is my sony boombox this is the best reference monitor <laughs> that i have in my studio you know what i'm saying yes i got some high-end uh adam a7 nexus but this thing right here man i just love it i love to listen to mixes on it i will do a I'll do like 90% of my mixing, listening to the A7Xs, and then I'll bring it over to this uh, little boom box to do finishing touches and just get a feel of what this music will sound like kind of outside the studio. This has saved me from having to do like a car test or anything like that. And I just, um, yeah, man, I just love that little, that, that little uh, boom box. Like it'll really reveal if you have any problem areas, especially like in your low mid-range frequencies it's very revealing there that a lot of high-end monitors just won't tell you about man of course we got the world famous now uh germex bro you got to make sure you got that sanitizer on decks because that rona is real she's still out here so we're gonna make sure we stay protected at all times i got my actual this is a little flock audio uh setup sheet that i'm sit that i use to uh kind of help me uh configure my patches and my via my flack audio patch bay and we'll get to that but um i also keep an apollo twin close by just because um it's good if i'm using my laptop and i want to do something different separately from using the main computer here um, but uh, another reason is that i can actually connect this with the other apollo interfaces that i have and utilize the additional uh two um, DSP cards that are within this device too. So if I'm ever running low and I need to use more Apollo plugins, I can do it like that. Let's come on down to my 500 series chassis, which is bare right now. All I have is just two Shadow Hills mic pre's. I really want to know what y'all think I should get next to fill this thing up. I've been thinking about a couple of the double wide retro instruments, um, two compressors, but let me know, man. What what are y'all rocking in y'all 500 series racks? These are a couple Shadow Hill Mono Gamma mic pre's. I love using these for recording, obviously, because they are super dope as mic pre's, but they also work great to just run a mix through um, and get that transformer sound that they have in them, man. So um, you can choose between nickel or steel transformers. They also have a discrete uh, transformer as well. But my favorite is that nickel, man. I put that on something and it just fattens it up. So I'm using a Rupert Neves Design R6 chassis. And then down below here, we got my old Mac Pro trash can. This thing is super powerful, um, even though it's shaped a little weird. And you see it's got like a cable mesh coming up off of it because, you know, that's that's how Apple design stuff. But they actually, I found that they have a, uh, they have a rack unit that I can put this sideways and it'll lay in there. Um, and I can just uh, put that in my rack. I saw it on Vintage King. So I might just have to go ahead and, and add that to the studio sometime. Hey man, I wanna give a big shout out to Roland for sponsoring the channel and helping me to continue to bring y'all some dope, dope 
content. I have been having so much fun using my Roland Verse Lab MV1. It's got me back into producing, making beats, making songs, and having a good time doing it without even having to use any dog. I literally can set this joint up in my bedroom and just start making music. If you're watching this video while the giveaway is still going on, click the link down in the description below so you can win your own Roland Verse Lab. So now let's move over to the first little sidecar on my desk, man. Let's check out this uh, desk, man. This is the Argosy Halo Plus Studio Desk. Super solid, sturdy. It's the perfect size, perfect fit. I couldn't be happier with this purchase of this desk, honestly, man. The Argosy Halo Desk is just made. It's made in America, and it's a nice little nice desk for sure. Um, but yeah, let's, let's get started. I guess let's start at the top and work our way up. So of course the Atom A7X studio monitors, those are like my main stains right there. You know what I'm talking about? Not those stains right there on that wall. Cause I glued some stuff on the wall. I'm talking about these actual monitors. They're just great, especially paired with the Atom T10S subwoofers. Yes. I always rock two subs. Um, you just got to know, man. You got to know to know. Don't wait until you're old to switch over and get you a second subwoofer at all, all right? Um, but I love the A7Xs. I got a full review video on those as well. And I've been rocking with these uh, Mackie HR824s not too long, but just recently. So I have an actual review video coming up on those. So I'm kind of learning them, testing those out. But I think they're some pretty dope monitors as well. To actually control all my monitors, I'm using the PreSonus Essential Station. You can check that out right here. This is a rack mounted monitor controller. Allows me to select all my inputs and speaker selects. Um, the dope thing is though, is that it has this little remote. So I don't really ever gotta touch anything on that rack unit. I do everything via this remote. Um, you know, switch between speakers A, B, um, C is the sub, A is the Atoms, B are the uh, the Mackies, and again, C is my sub. So um, whenever I'm, I'm working, I can just easily switch between those, turn the sub on, turn the sub off, rock with the B set, turn the sub on, turn the sub off. It even has a talk back feature as well. And I like this because um, you can hook up one of these, a little foot switch, and you can activate the talk back. Yeah, I'm just really showing off my Jordans. You can activate the talk back uh, by using your foot switch. That way you can keep your hands on your mouse and not in the keyboard and not have to worry about uh, going back and forth on that. So speaking of a mouse, I love this mouse, man. The Logitech MX Master 3. This is my favorite mouse. It's just so ergonomic, fits in the hand perfectly. You only got to move so much. It's so sensitive. Like you do a tiny little movement and you can be halfway across the screen. Um, it's got the horizontal scroll, which a lot of mouse uh, don't have. And then it also have um, the vertical scroll, you know, which everybody got that. But I love that mouse. And I also love this keyboard, too. This is a Logitech uh, keyboard, too. And the dope thing about this keyboard is that it's actually solar powered and wireless, you know, super thin. It's got little feet to prop up if you like to prop it up. I don't really like it like that, though. Um, but it's solar powered. And even though I don't have any windows exposed in here, I covered all my windows up to keep the sound out and everything. Um, it actually can charge off of regular light, like the lamp light. So as long as I have some type of light on in the studio throughout the day, then this thing will charge up. It's never died on me. It's been like over two years almost since I had this thing. So that's a little uh little gem for y'all right there and this mouse is also wireless too but it charges up via usb but it lasts for at least a month at a time before you have to charge it up so let's get back over to this rizak racks on racks on racks so in this rack i have um you see that teletronics what that say la2a baby nah this ain't no this ain't no knockoff this is the real deal la2a not a clone this is not a clone i repeat this is not a clone <laughs> all right so that's my la2a i love using that for uh recording obviously um when i'm recording vocals but i also like it when i'm mixing 
if I'm actually mixing uh, a vocal, I can actually route it out of my Pro Tools system and then route directly um, through here to compress the vocal um, and then put it back in Pro Tools, man. So um, I do the same with the distressor compressors too. They're great for recording and mixing. And a little vocal chain that I really like to use recently um, has been coming from the Focusrite ISA 430. All right, so this one we trying to jumping over here. Um, my focus right ISA 430. This is a whole channel strip here, um, producer pack. So it has preamp, has compressor, EQ, filter sections, everything that you would need on a channel strip. So I like to just use the preamp on here, and then because it's super clean, and then come and hit it with the LA 2A, and then finish that signal off uh, with a distressor for when I'm tracking vocals, and then go into my uh, converters. Wow, sounds really, really good like that. So I, I really been rocking with that. This little baby right here is my new Boo. This is the Neve 8816. And wow, she sounds so good, looks good. Um, this is a summon mixer, man. So basically, I am doing all of my analog uh, summing uh, here. Instead of just mixing completely in the box, I'm getting some of that good Neve summing sound on my mixes um and i'm also one thing i really love about this device is that it's got this insert mix option to basically where i can patch a whole you know what i'm saying an insert processor uh, over my whole mix or i can parallel mix it in and so what i've been doing is using some parallel compression over my whole mix with this behringer tube composer shout out to my guy adam long for putting me on to that move the light over here a little bit yeah, but this Behringer Tube Composer, by itself, it is a pretty crappy, cheap compressor. And I wouldn't recommend just using this on your, your mix um, by itself. But if you parallel it in with the original mix and you add this in, it definitely adds some saturation and it adds some character to that mix. Um, and I've really been enjoying using that through the Neve 8816. And it also has this uh, wide control, this little width uh, option that gives me like some mastering grade level widening on my mix. And the mixes are just super fat, super big, a lot of depth, all by using this Neve. That's what's really adding it to my mixes lately. So, um, yeah, man, getting out the box for me has been it's been good because it's like a lot of stuff that you just can't get in the box that you can get out the box. So, um all right, let's go now to this little thing right here. Everybody always see me and ask them about that. Let me see. This is the TC Electronics Clarity M. Um, basically, it's a meter. It's a loudness meter. It also has a V-scope on it, so I can see my stereo field, see how wide and uh, you know lush my mixes are in the stereo field. And it also has like a, uh, a loudness meter so I can see how loud we are over time. All right. And it's got some other little features, but that's pretty much how I use it, man. It's basically just I'm using it as a meter and I like having it sit there because I don't have to pull up any plugins. They got plugins and stuff that do the exact same stuff, but I'd rather just not have to take up any more real estate on my screen because you see I'm already using pretty much everything that I have. I don't want to add another third screen uh, just to put a meter on there. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, and then right up under there, we got the PreSonus Fader Port 16, which has been a joy. It looks great for one. It just looks good sitting there. Um, and the faders, everything is super responsive. Um, I love the touch control, the tactile control that you get by actually being able to rub your fingers on some faders. Instead of always just clicking with the mouse, as good as that mouse is. <laughs> All right, now let's come on over here. Yeah, I ain't even got this on, but it don't matter. It ain't because it ain't synced up. But this is my Flock Audio patch, right? This is basically my patch bay. And no, I don't need any patch cables for this thing at all because. Everything is connected via D subs in the back. All the different analog gears connected here to my patch bay. And they have an app. I'm gonna actually open this up. They have an app that allows me to control all of the different routing. So it is a digitally controlled analog patch bay. 
Well, you can see that this is the patch app. If I wanted to do something like, you know, I could easily say, you know what, let's go from the Shadow Hills uh, to Distressor 1, you know, to my LA-2A, and then into the Apollo, right? So just like that, I just basically set up a patch. I just routed signal through my studio, all analog connections, without getting out my seat, without having to fuss with any patch cables or nothing like that. So I've been rocking with this Flock Audio patch. And I'm gonna actually add another one in my system soon so I can connect even more stuff. But yeah, this is this is dope. This is a major key, major upgrade. Um, if you're planning on using analog gear, I definitely would recommend that you get that Flock Audio patch. All right, so now, you see my interfaces, man. I rock with the UA interfaces. We got the Apollo X6 and Apollo X16. I mean, they basically speak for themselves, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what, what can I say about it? So um, I basically use the X6 as my main monitoring paths, right? And I use those outputs as my main monitoring paths, and it also has a couple of um, uh, uh, preamps on there, right? It's got the Unison preamp, so if I need to use those, I can use those as well. The X16, I primarily use that, and you see I still got the tape on it. Still got to keep that new plastic on there. I primarily use that as the, um, getting signals in and out to the Neve 8816. It's got 16 inputs and outputs. That's got 16 inputs, so it makes sense for me to um, to, to use that primarily for that purpose. And then we already kind of went over this uh, Behringer Tube Composer and the Focusrite uh, ISA 430 Producer Pack. But we ain't really go over these. Oh, we, these joints are coming soon. These are the Wavy One Studio Isolating Headphones, man. Yes, these are great for recording. See, we got that little red touch in there, man. These are super great for recording, and they also work well for mixing. They are true and accurate to sound. All assembled right here in the US of A. Quality products with a guarantee. And, the, you know, the best thing about it, honestly for me is that they have a uh, passive attenuation so when you put these on it's like you're going into a different world you see how they built to really block out the outside noise but it also doesn't let noise get out either so while you're recording if you ever um uh having a problem with headphones bleeding into your microphone uh this will help that problem man and that's why we designed these the way we did all right so those are the wavy ones so, isolating studio headphones and really i think that's my studio all right let's see the chair the chair wanted to get in the way so let's see the chair all right this is just some little gamer chair that i got from like office max honestly it's not the most comfortable chair it looks cool i got the pillow on the back because i don't really like that thing sitting on my on my neck pushing me up too forward but yeah i'm probably gonna get a different chair man um because forget this chair all right child that is the first look at my new this is like a brand new studio to me my brand new redesigned studio all new workflow analog hybrid setup with the analog and the digital new desk new panels new gear new monitors everything new man drop down in the comments let me know what y'all think do y'all want to you want me to do a microphone tour too because i got some mics that i can show y'all all right so uh yeah thanks for watching this video make sure that you like comment and subscribe to the channel don't forget to visit wavywayne.com so you can grab one of them professional recording and mixing templates that's guaranteed to help you record and mix better and faster all right be dope